Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this to this. I'll cover everything. So without further introduction, let's get into it. I have opened up the two assets for this project, which you can find in the link in the description. Please use for educational purposes only. We have a background and an image of a car. For transferring the image into the other document, we need to pick the move tool from the toolbar and left click drag it to the other project like this. We can scale it up using the Ctrl T shortcut in the keyboard and use the handles to adjust our image into place. Double click to confirm the changes. For isolating the car on a new layer, the best way is to use the object selection tool from the toolbar. Make sure object finder is on and choose lasso as a selection method. Left click drag around the subject and let Photoshop do its magic. As great as it is to get a good initial selection with one click, we have to inspect the selection to make sure there are no errors. If we find any, we can easily use the polygonal lasso tool to fix them. Just make sure you use it while holding down Alt or Shift which add or subtract the closed shape we make from the whole selection. As you can see, I am checking and correcting any issues that I find. Please note that you should spend more time on this compared to me. Now let's make a copy of our car by going to the layers panel and pressing the shortcut Ctrl J, which is the fastest way to make copies on a new layer from anything in Photoshop. Let's use the original layer to get the shadows and caustics. Firstly, we need to change the blending mode. We should compare multiply with overlay to see which one gives us the best results. In this case, overlay might be a better fit because we can see the highlight bleed under the car more clearly. Secondly, we should remove the extra parts from this layer. The best way is to hold the ALT key and make an empty layer mask by clicking this icon right here. Now we need to pick the brush tool from the toolbar and use a white color. It's best to lower the brush opacity to have more control. We should spend some time and carefully paint back the contact shadows and caustics into the design like this. After this stage is done, we need to correct the lighting of the car to match the background. First, let's add a curves adjustment layer on top of the car. Clip the adjustment to the car layer by pressing this icon right here in the adjustment properties window. We can use these eyedroppers in the curves adjustment to play with the white balance and luminosity of our car. Let's pick the black one and choose the darkest part of the background. Do the same for the gray and white eyedroppers. It's worth mentioning that only the pros use this trick, which gives the user the most control over the final result. You can clearly see that this adjustment makes tiny important lighting and color changes to the car. To take it a step further, let's add an empty layer on top and clip it to the car by holding down the Alt key and left clicking between the layers. We need to change the blending mode to screen to use it to capture the highlights only. Now pick the brush tool and sample the sky color by holding down the Alt key and left clicking. Carefully paint over the back side of the car with a low opacity brush like this. Maybe you need a few tries to get this right. Now, to top it off, let's add a new layer and this time change it to overlay. Clip it to the layer below and use the brush tool to paint in the colors around the car. Use this layer for both major highlights and shadows that we need to add to the car to make it fit more to the scene. We can make final adjustments to these layers before we move forward. I chose to lower the fill on the highlight layer because it was too much in my opinion. If you didn't already notice, 
there is a harsh crease in the back side that we need to fix. We need to blur it a little bit and to accomplish this with the most control, we need to select the car layer and go to the filter menu, then blur gallery and hit field blur. In this new window, we need to set points and adjust the blur and Photoshop will blend the total blur based on our points. So the front of the car should have no blur and the back should have a minor blur like 4 or 5 pixels. We can use the slider on the right or the circular one around each point to adjust the blur amount. Follow along with me and pay attention that I added an extra no blur point. As we can see here, this method solved our harsh edges problem. Now we need to add some bloom lighting into the car and the whole scene. And to get this done, we need two new layers. For the first one, let's make a copy of the car layer by control clicking its icon and using control J on the shadow layer to make another copy. Left click drag it to the top and we need to change its blending mode to linear dodge to make this effect work. After that, let's apply a Gaussian blur from the filter menu and use a high number because we need to spread and even out the colors for the bloom effect. Now we only need to lower the fill and we are done with this layer. To remove the bloom from the shadow parts, make a mask for the layer and use the brush tool and a black color to carefully mask out the extras. For the second layer, we need an overall bloom from all the things that we have done until now. To merge all the layers and effects into a new one, Press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to make a copy of the canvas and put it in a new layer like this. Neat little trick this is. Next, we need to apply a Gaussian Blur to it and we should use a relatively high number for this one. Next, we need to lower the fill and we are done with this layer. You can see the changes that this effect has given us. The last part of this composition is the final color grading. Let's make another copy of the canvas by using the same shortcut. Now we need to go to filter menu and choose the very powerful camera raw filter. You can mess around all you want in this new window and get instant feedback. But I choose to first increase the clarity and play with the adjacent sliders and then get into the exposure highlights and the shadows. We can also sharpen and remove noise in the detail tab. The last thing I do is to play with the temperature sliders. When we are done here, we can click OK and get our final result like this. And that's it you guys. I really hope you learned a thing or two from me and if you like to see more, please subscribe to my channel. See you guys on the next one. Peace out.